Is Honda really going to be building a new small truck that's going to kill the Toyota, the Ford Maverick? Uh, we got news about the Toyota Stout coming up in just a moment right after this episode. But first, let's cover whether Honda actually has a new vehicle that is going to kill the Ford Maverick. Now, we've got Scotty here and he's presenting this vehicle right here. Let's see what it is, folks. He's got his wife, right? So he dropped the Camry and he thought, I'll try out this Honda Ridgeline. And his friend said, oh, they're going to think we're girlies driving to snug around. It's a girly car. It is not a girly truck. It is what you might call a specialty truck. Honda said they built them for Honda owners that want to get a pickup truck. Well, he was a Toyota driver and he didn't get a Toyota pickup. He got this because he likes the way that this thing rides. Because I like my son's Tacoma, which has a full frame, this Ridgeline is a unibody construction. It rides much better, the Honda. And with the Honda suspension system, he got in this thing and he said, I'm not even. So starting off, Scotty, uh, he's a mechanic. He's been a mechanic for about 50, over 56 years, and he's bringing up a great point. Generally, when you have a unibody vehicle, it is going to ride better than a truck. And that is what's been, you know, noticed in regards to the Hyundai Santa Cruz as well as the Ford Maverick. Now, sales on those are actually up 17.9% uh, in 2023 over 2022. Of course, a lot of that had to do with actually getting inventory, producing more, putting them on dealer lots. And, you know, even now, we still have a huge, huge problem with getting enough Ford Mavericks. I regularly see Santa Cruz's available, so I think they've pretty much hit, pretty much hit what they can they're producing and feeding dealerships just about everything they can handle selling because I've been driving by the same Hyundai dealership on my way to work out five days a week for the last, you know, 11 years. And since those uh, Santa Cruz's have been up on the lot, they like to put one up on uh, the top and push it. And I'll see the color change from the Santa Cruz up top about every month and a half so they always have santa cruises available not the first few months that they're available but in the last 12 months they've always had a santa cruz available but ford maverick is the best selling truck uh they own they could still sell a lot more when we do get them in inventory it's because it's a cancelled customer order and that truck's not going anywhere. We could easily sell twice as many. Last year, Ford got about 105,000 sold Ford Mavericks. And Ford could sell probably easily 200,000 Mavericks per year without them, you know, stacking up and collecting dust on the lots. But Scotty brought up a really good point. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to mechanics. The unibody frame, just like the Santa Cruz, just like the Ford Maverick. It's a great basis for providing a very comfortable ride. Now, if you live in a salty area, you're going to want to get these rust proofed. And the reason for that is unibody means there's no big, huge, thick frame. If you think of a ladder, that's how you can think of sort of like having a, a body on, on, built on top of a ladder. That's how your traditional truck frame is built. Ford Ranger has a great truck frame because it's fully boxed in, meaning the transversal bars go through the main frame and those the main frame, main frame steel, like ladder, the two beams going down, it's extremely thick steel and still pretty thick steel for the transversal bars. But fully boxed in means even the transversals are well like rectangles or squares and ideal fully boxed in means they're going through the frame. So you get a really strong frame that can resist. It can deal with years and years of rust. These unibodies more comfortable, but get them rust proof like Z-Bart or steel wool, get some sort of product underneath them uh, and try to get a, any money you spend. The more money you spend on undercoating these, the better it's going to be. But let's see, you know, why does Scotty seem to think this is going to kill the Ford Maverick? Well, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of may almost seeming like uh, almost like legacy media here uh, because this is uh, almost in the category of propaganda. But let's continue. 
and call the Ford dealer. I'm going to buy this thing. Now, you might say, why don't you get a Ford Maverick? Well, the Maverick's built in Mexico. This is built in the United States, right? If you didn't want to mess with something that was brand new made in Mexico, I don't blame them. And now that I see they've been out for a little while and they had a lot of problems, probably a smart move. But these only come in all-wheel drive, and Honda makes pretty good all-wheel drive systems. He's not going to get stuck. He said it went fine in the snow, the one big snow in Tennessee. A few inches, right? <laughs> He's not pulling tons. You can pull 5,000 pounds with this, but that's not why he got this. Something's going to last a long time. Honda's generally going to last a long time. He's not. Now, that's a really good point. A reason why this, you know, one point this could kill the Ford Maverick is that it can pull 5,000 pounds. You need to have 4K towing with the Ford Maverick to pull 4,000 pounds. So, yes, this out toes the Ford Maverick, but it has some major handicaps. We'll let him continue talking. He's talking about the reliability of the Honda Ridgeline, which I agree with. Absolutely, it's a very reliable six-cylinder. It's a very reliable transmission, but it also takes up a lot more fuel, consumes more fuel, of course, a, a lot more compared to the Ford Maverick Hybrid, and still a good amount more than the two-liter EcoBoost. Let's let him continue talking about, you know, how why this these are i guess his reasons for how this could kill out the ford maverick which actually had an incredible sales year i'm pulling a lot of weight he didn't care about a gigantic bag now as you can see it's got a regular tailgate bus there's a little handle and voila the best of both worlds and since it's a honda phone you're not going to break now under here as you can see nice space now, a tailgate that pulls out like that is great for having access to your box, pulling things in and out of your box, but it's not fantastic if you're parallel parked and someone's behind you. Now, the Ford Maverick was built, has a four and a half foot box, and it's really built with the idea of being an amazing city commuter. So both have their pros and cons. The Ridgeline's towing more, has a six cylinder that some people will like more, but then, you know, it's not nearly as fuel efficient. And... Well, the Ford Maverick could have sold a lot more. Our yards never filled up with a whole bunch of available Ford Mavericks. You'll see some YouTube videos showing all sorts of Ford Mavericks in a yard saying, look, Ford can't sell these. No, those are customer orders. People bombard the dealership with saying, no, I want to buy it. I see it out on the yard. I'm buying that. I'm taking it. And you'll actually see a whole bunch on the internet because as soon as a Ford Maverick or any Ford is built at factory, Generally, it's going to get pushed into the dealership, pretty much always gets pushed into the dealership inventory. And as inventory, the dealership, through the systems that they have for advertising and through Ford advertising, it's going to get posted as if it's available, but it's a customer order. And another way to know that it's a customer order is also because the window sticker is going to be green instead of blue. So at Ford, blue and white, it's inventory. Most likely, but it's often can be inventory that sells before ever showing up at the dealership. And if it's green and white, the window sticker, I've got a window sticker out here. That's uh, my Bronco, one of my Broncos, the Bronco window sticker out in the corner there. It's green and white. That's because it was my personal order. So keep that in mind. Now, Marine Vet, uh, fantastic. Thank you for your membership supporting the business and thank you for the excellent information the honda ridgeline is also ten thousand dollars more and maybe that's part of the reason why honda struggles in the u.s struggles to sell between 28 and forty thousand dollar uh, sorry 28 and forty thousand units honda ridgelines per year and the maverick last year in 2023 you could say very easily sold 105 because there's still a lot of people waiting on their maverick and it's also there's a ton of people that won't buy or order a maverick because they're waiting for them to be available on the lots so uh someone bringing up the point frank keel the new maverick hybrid is the new mustang of the future yeah the mustang in the 1960s what is it they they sold several 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 hundred thousand i think close to a million one year and people wanted that model bad, just like the Ford Maverick. I think the Ford Maverick year one, if they would have had 400 or 500,000 available, they would have sold all of them easily. There is a drain under here. So you can use this as a giant ice bucket if you want. Or leave the drain shut. You can put your luggage and suitcase in it. And check this out. What's hiding in here? You got yourself 150. That's pretty good. One guy uses a TV here. You can have that on the Ford as well. And 
watch this. There's speakers hiding in here. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Well, we'll let you find out so you can make a wise decision yourself. So he's actually showing the Honda Ridgeline. It's, yes, it may be new in the sense that it's the new Honda Ridgeline, but it's nothing new from Honda and it's not going to outsell it's not even going to come close to outselling the Ford Maverick, so it has no chance, no hope of killing the Ford Maverick. So whether you're watching legacy media in regards to you know topics such as health topics, topics in regards to the various wars going around the world, um, this is just a reminder, legacy media will often tell you one thing, but you really need, if you look around a little, you'll find out that the truth is actually quite the opposite. Well, I like how Scotty has, you know, whether it's deliberate or coincidentally brought attention to that because he sort of has titles, but the type of titles that we see and the coverage we see from legacy media in regards to health and wars uh, very interesting. So the Honda new vehicle just killed the Ford Maverick. Honda's new vehicle just killed the Ford Maverick is a lot like the legacy coverage. Well, at least he goes into depth talking about what makes the Honda Ridgeline great. Reliability, uh, resale is actually very good as well, but Ford Maverick hasn't had any issues with resale. Actually, people who got early editions sold them for more than window sticker. Uh, Scotty definitely really does like Toyota, loves Toyota, loves, generally loves Honda, brings up great point about the unibody, the reliability, but let's check out the inside of a Honda Ridgeline, because yes, it's $10,000 more than a Ford Maverick, so if you point out that the, inside, the interior of the Honda Ridgeline looks better than a Ford Maverick, I hope so, it's $10,000 more, folks. With 375,000 miles, I'd say he got his money out of the car. It's got a memory seat. All kinds of buttons for your phone. To turn that off so we don't have to listen to it. Simple cruise control. It's intelligent cruise. Not a fan here of these new screens that they like to put these high gloss black screens in vehicles and that's just a nightmare for keeping clean now the honda ridge line's not that bad but the santa cruz we test drove one and we really were not a fan of not a fan at all of that all that black high gloss very interior it's, it looks great when it's clean it looks amazing in a showroom but it's horrendous to live with even just on a you know a one hour road test after five minutes before going out set the radio uh with the touch screen drive out for five minutes and while i'm driving I, i'm unbelievably distracted by all those fingerprints it's it's nasty stuff Cruise control, economy, if you want to get a little bit better gas mileage, you can have parking sense on or off, lane change, you can turn that stuff off, traction control, heated seats. Very smart. Now, part of reliability, unfortunately, reliability studies, um, this, you know, a, a lot of them will look at how many times people go to the dealership and not even all customers for a particular model. They'll take a hundred or a thousand customers at random. The studies I hate the most or dis disagree with the most only take a hundred individuals and that's not a good enough sample group. group. But they'll take a hundred individuals and ask them, other than an oil change in your first year, how many times did you go to the dealership? And that's what they'll base their reliability on. And smart. The Honda Ridgeline is built in a very smart manner. Did you notice all those buttons? There's a button for eco. There's a button for, there's a button for everything. And that's going to eliminate a lot of people going to the dealership saying, for example, oh, well, the Bluetooth is broken. It's not making phone calls. So the, the, the touch screen, the phone call system is broken. When in reality, often I live with it on a weekly basis, you know, people come in, buyers who've either bought elsewhere or at my dealership come in say it's broken can you help me out because they see there's a line you know there's a bit of a wait at service for high low for high for low howdy my friend and pujo howdy thank you for making it now their bluetooth is often off so the air the 18 inch air the air between you know the steering wheel and the the driver's seat that's where a lot of these errors come in and you know consumer reports 
has been honest about it in the past. They say, you know, most of the problems uh, appearing in the first year are related to technology. I live with it on a regular basis, but the Honda Ridgeline can get a really good, you know, reliability for a certain model status or can even win awards, especially when they remove, they have all these buttons so people don't get confused. But that means lower, you know, in a sense, kind of lower tech. Some people like that. Some people dislike it. But the reliability studies we talked about in last week's live, the reliability studies are sometimes kind of crap. I, I'm more, I focus more on manufacturer responsibility. That's where the studies should be. And yes, Honda had the number of recalls, their recalls affected the greatest number of people in 2023. Honda. And I'm not here to say Honda is unreliable and crap. That would make me a regular journalist. Journalists will take these reliability studies, you know, first year reliability, and they'll have a title like, um, and Scotty in another episode just recently actually said that Ford for the last two years has, ha has had the greatest uh, the recalls that affect the most people, well, Ford has had the greatest amount of recalls, but it's not true in regards to affecting the most amount of people. In 2023, the brand that had the recalls that affected the most number of people is Honda. And soon, it probably should be Toyota if they stop lying and start taking responsibility for the vehicles they build. We'll get to that in the next episode both sides. One of the things I like is, look, your whole control system here, look, it was designed to fit right in. I like something like this. I don't like it. Amps temperature. Don't like it one bit. It shows all the fingerprints. Scotty's diagno diagnostic tool is better because it shows less fingerprints than that uh, touchscreen. Perfect. See cylinder wrist fire zero all the way down. Right here with the inverter that this thing has. See this particular scanner does an awful lot of information. So we're gonna, now getting a commercial for uh, Pelican Parts because while I shop for my Porsches, I shop on Pelican Parts. So Scotty, great that he brings up uh, the Honda Ridgeline because a lot of us often forget about it. <laughs> we forget about it because there aren't that many on the road. They're selling generally roughly 30, 35,000 per year. Ford Maverick could have tripled sales, at least doubled. If you don't wanna believe me on triple, they could have doubled sales, but I'm on the floor, I'm an insider. My dealership, I can tell you, many emails per week, many phone calls, it must be about five to 10 phone calls per day is what we were living with for the last two years. That Ford Maverick, I wanna buy it. Customer order, so sorry, then they're upset because it ended up on the website. So Honda, Honda first of all, is probably, they're far away. If you're waiting for Honda to build you a small truck that's actually going to compete with the Toyota Maverick, they could, but it's nowhere close. They probably build it off the Honda CRV platform. That means they'll probably have a CVT transmission, and I'm not fan a fan of that. And Scotty Kilmore is not a fan of the new Honda CRVs. He says that it's ruining Honda and ruining Honda reliability because they're using a CVT transmission in the CRV. So while Scotty got us to all probably all click on that video because they're like, wow, what's coming out of Honda and how and why is it going to kill the Ford Maverick? Well, it's not going to kill the Ford Maverick because it's just the Honda Ridgeline. Sales of that are not going to explode anytime soon because it's just too expensive. And let that be an important lesson to Ford. Do not increase more the price of the Ford Maverick because if it gets to Honda Ridgeline territory, those incredible sales and that incredible demand is going to dry up. And of course, there's a happy balance between, you know, producing a good amount of vehicles and getting them sold. And when the demand is so much higher than the actual production and the actual models available, then yeah, you might look as a manufacturer of anything. You might say, hey, you know what? We could raise our price more. And as we raise the price up, that insane demand, which is, you know, triple our production, raise the price, demand is going to come down and we'll meet production demand, supply and demand. They'll meet when we actually get it to the right price. But Ford, please don't make that dangerous mistake. I think if you add $10,000 on the price of the Ford Maverick, it's, I, I think it's like an exponential, the sales can increase and demand can increase exponentially. But I think with price going up, 
demand would decrease exponentially. So don't wait around for a Honda small truck. If they build it, it's going to be almost certainly built off the CRV platform. It's going to be certainly it's certainly going to have a CVT transmission. And if you like Scotty like I do, and you believe in what he has to say in regards to, you know, quality of parts and just general mechanical knowledge, I agree with them. CVT is not the way to go. I avoid CVT transmissions at all costs. Now, Ford Maverick, that's an eCVT that was designed uh, with Toyota when Ford and Toyota had a partnership. It's very much, it's very, very similar to the Toyota Prius hybrid transmission, and it's absolutely fantastic. 